You are now tuned into the network, the YouTube channel that takes complex networking topics and dumbs them down to a more simpler language. Today's topic is section 6.5a, DHCP client, DHCP server, and DHCP relay. This is a topic in the CCMP route exam. It will be known as the CCMP enterprise exam in the year 2020. Let's go ahead and take a look at the exam blueprint and see where we came from, where we're headed. Hashtag lab every day. All right, this is the exam blueprint. Again, implementing Cisco IP routing, exam code 300-101. It'll be known as Exam code 300-401 in the future. We just wrapped up the section NTP authentication. Today, we're going to do DHCP client, DHCP server, and DHCP relay. This mouse is wigging out on me over here, this mouse pad. We kind of talked about DHCP services in this section right here, 3.1C uh, and 3.1D. So we just going to just briefly talk about the theory and then just jump right into the labs that we got from gns3volt.com. Shout out to gns3volt.com. But anyways, we said that DHCP is a service that could be on a router or a layer three switch, right? What do DHCP, what are DHCP services? Well, it stands for dynamic host configuration protocol. First of all, clients on the network need IP addresses to communicate. They need these IP addresses to communicate on the network. Well, how do they obtain these IP addresses? You guessed it, through a DHCP server, right? Because if it's not written out onto them or or, or configured on, the, uh, on them manually, then they have to obtain those IP addresses automatically, and that's done through DHCP services, right? Now, again, for this exam, we're gonna be uh, learning how to configure it on a router. That's basically what it is. So let's just jump right into it, because like I said, if you want more theory, you can go back into those videos on my CCMP playlist, and that'll give you more information in as far as like the request, op, you know, and and the uh, and discover messages, and and I drill it down to the IP header, the DHCP header, and what they are. So if you want more information on that, go ahead and visit that. All right, so here's the lab we're gonna be working with today. We got router bliss on the left hand side, router ignorance on the right hand side. Bliss will be configured as a server. Ignorance will be con configured as a client, DHCP client. They are both sitting in the 192.168.12.0 network. Step one, let's jump right into it. Configure a DHCP pool on router Bliss called Vault. So we're going to console in the router Bliss, create a pool called Vault. Pool, Vault, get it? <laughs> Go to global config mode. We're going to say IP DHCP pool, and then we're going to name it V-A-U-L-T, all caps, right? Next thing is clients should use the DNS server with IP address quad one. So we're going to say uh, DNS server 1.1.1.1 right that's easy enough right step three clients should use the network 192.168.12.0 slash 24 range so which just simple network 192.168.12.0 subnet mask is 255.255.255.0 probably could have been easy if i would have just done slash 24 right clients should not use the 192.168.12.0.10 through 20 range, right? That's what it says here, right? Why would we want to do that? Well, let's say you have some IP addresses or devices with IP addresses and you don't want them to change. You want them to keep their IP address, right? Well, you should have a set of numbers that you are going to exclude from being handed out, right? Like devices like servers, or printers, those IP, those devices, they usually don't change their IP addresses, right? So that's why we want to give them a um, a static IP. So we would exclude them. We need to get out of DHCP configuration mode. Just go to global configuration mode and do IP excluded addresses, right? No, IP DHCP excluded address. And what are the addresses range? The first thing they want us to do is put the low, the low IP address range. Yeah, the low IP was 182.168.12.10. High IP address is 192.168.12.10. 20. So that is the range of IP addresses we don't want handed out, right? Next step says clients should renew their IP address after two hours. You got to go to global config DHCP configuration mode for this one. Go back to the pool. So IP DHCP pool, and the name of it was Vault. And we're going to say lease is all it is. It's just lease. And then after that, you see it says days, right? Well, we don't want days. We want to do two hours. So in this case, you're going to leave it to zero. Next question says, Zero through 23 hours, right? So how many hours? We said two. Now, when I first was doing this, I was like, days, how many days? I, I don't want days. I need hours. That's how you, you got to put a zero there. And then after that, you can put minutes. So really, you could do zero, zero, 120, right? Because 120 minutes is two hours, right? 
But in this case, we're just going to do two hours and leave it at zero to zero. So lease is zero to zero. That's how you break that down. Next step says to configure out a bliss so it does not respond to boot P. Y'all know what boot P is, right? Boot P is basically the predecessor to DHCP. So basically, when DHCP first came out, it was called boot P. That was like the older version. I, I think it runs on different port numbers and everything. So if you want more information on that, I'll probably look up a link and leave it a link in the description below, or you can just Google it. <laughs> so we want to not respond to boot P. And I believe you just do. I don't know if you got to go to global config mode for that. I believe you got to go to or get out of DHCP configuration mode. And see IP DHCP boot P right there. See that right there? Boot P specific information. That right there, right? See that? So we just do boot P. What's the next contact sensitive help say? Ignore. See how simple that is? So sometimes iOS can be intuitive when it comes to writing some commands. Sometimes it's not, but right there, it's as simple as that. IP, DHCP, boot P, ignore. That ignores responses from boot P. I don't know what kind of, you, I guess you can configure an end device to use boot P, but this one right here, configure router bliss so it does, so it stores DHCP bindings in flash. Let's see what we got in our flash so far. DIR flash. We have one called my binding. Right. So we're going to write our bindings to that that uh, that file right there. Let's do that. We want to say IPDACP database, the database. We're going to take the database and store this database to flash. Right. Maybe we want to inspect it later on or see uh, how many addresses are, you know, what, you know, what devices are on our network. You know, like say we have some a, B a BYOD network where people bring their own device and we want to look you know, look at the database to see who's been on our network. That's one way to do it. And we write it to flash by IP DHCP database. We say flash colon. We do a forward slash there and put the name of the uh, of the file we're going to write it to. And I believe we're going to do my binding. So we're going to write it to that. I'm not sure how I could really look it up. I believe you could do show IP DHCP bindings to look it up that way. Uh, looks like we couldn't write to that. So we got an error here. That's interesting. Oh, that's what it was. Was it my binding or bindings? Let's verify that. Yeah, it was my binding. So it is read write. So I'm not too sure about that one. We got a read write error there. That's interesting. Let's go ahead and skip that one for now. I'm not even sure what's wrong with that one. We're gonna skip that one for now. If anybody knows how to solve that problem, I think the size of our flash storage, notice right here is zero bytes free. So basically, we need to make some space to do that. So let's go ahead and delete from Flash. And we're going to get rid of this bad boy. Get rid of here. Cortana. Does anybody use Cortana? Yeah. Does anybody use it? Please let me know because that thing is annoying. But anyways, let's uh, DIR Flash. Zero bytes free. We got no files in the directory, but still can't do it. Let's... uh. We can't write to the bind. We can't write our bindings to this. Interesting. Let's go ahead and skip that part for now because I don't want to waste your time trying to troubleshoot issues. Go to global config mode. We're going to go. We're, we need to find out what our IP address is. It's most likely it's FA00, it looks like right there. But let's do a show IP interface. Show IP interface brief. And you see it's unassigned and it's down. That's the only interface there. So let's say interface FA00, IP address what are our options here we could type in an ip address or we could uh negotiate one via dhcp and that's what we're going to do say dhcp give it some time we didn't let's do a no shut i don't know what i'm thinking here this ip this interface was was uh, was down now we brought it up hopefully we can get in the good negotiate an ip address now Come on, man. And there we go. We got an IP address assigned to that interface. We could also go back to Bliss and check. We probably still got that error there. I'll have to look that up and, and, and uh, put my findings of these bra binding errors at the in the notes below. So we'll just do show IP DHCP bindings. And you can see what MAC address has been bound to an IP address. And it shows you also the lease expiration. So it's going to lease at that time. And as you can see, the type of uh, type of DHCP address that was given. 
So let's go ahead and move on to DHCP relay. All right, so DHCP relay. A DHCP relay agent is any host that forwards DHCP packets between clients and servers. A relay agents are used to forward requests and replies between clients and servers when they are not on the same physical subnet. So if you look at this topology right here, we have the DHCP server on the right hand side, and then we also have a host on this side, but he does not in the same network as the server. So how does he get the IP address? Well, we have the relay agent in the middle. He just basically act like a middleman. That's basically what I said in the uh, other video, right? He just takes the request and hands them off to the server, and he just acts like a middleman between this between the DHCP server and the DHCP host. Let's go ahead and fire up GNS3 and experiment with DHCP relay. All right, so here's the lab we're gonna be working with today. Oh, I'm just mad because my trackpad been acting up. Had to go get the mouse, but anyways, we have router Odin who will be a DHCP server. He sits in the 34.0 network. Then we have Loki and Frey, who sits in the 123.0 network. Notice that they are in two separate networks. Well, guess what? Thor, the guy with the hammer, he is going to be our relay agent. So he's going to be taking these requests from these guys and handing them off to the DHCP server. First thing we want to do is configure router Odin as a DHCP server. Right now, we're consoled into it. Let's go ahead and do what it do. Go to global config mode and do exactly what we did in the last lab, IP DHCP, we're going to call this pool, we're just going to say Avengers, since I think that's what this uh, this theme here is. Uh, we're going to say network 192.168.123.0 network, All right? And then what's the subnet mask? We're going to give it the subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. That was that was the force of habit. My hand just took took me went ahead and did it by itself. What? Let's go ahead and exclude some addresses though. Let's let's exclude the first ten IP addresses in case we need to. IP DHCP excluded address. The excluded address is let's say one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot one twenty three dot one through one ninety two. Dot 168.123.10. Dot dot so we're gonna we're not gonna give out those first 10 IP addresses, right? Let's go ahead and give it a DNS server. We gotta go to the global, uh, DHCP config mode. So IP DHCP pool. And the name of it was Avengers. And we're gonna give the um, what we're gonna work on the DNS server 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. That's y'all pop quiz for today. What IP address is that DNS server? If you know the answer to that, please put it in the comments below. If you know the answer to that, what is the IP address 8.8.8.8 .8 is the DNS server for what name? What domain name? Okay, so we are going to, we gave that uh, the DNS server that. What else are we gonna do? We gave it an excluded address. Let's go ahead and work on the, well, see this router, also needs to know about that network too. So let's make sure he knows about that network. That was the other tricky part about this. And I'm, I'm be transparent with y'all. I did look up the solution, show IP routes, and notice he only knows about the 34.0 network. So we could run OSPF or EIGIP or something like that. We're just gonna make it easy and create a static route to that location. So we're gonna go to global config mode, say IP routes to get to the network 192 dot 168 dot 123 dot zero with a sudden mask of 255.255.255.0 take the next hop of let's just take that outgoing interface right there the fa00 interface so interface fa0 slash zero and let's take a look at his route routing table now show IP routes and notice this is a connected route 34.0 network, and this is the static route, 123.0. What's the uh, AD for that? Y'all know what the AD for that is? I don't, I don't see the AD on here for some reason, but anyways, that's because we did a whole network. Let's uh, let's go ahead and see if Loki, this guy, and Frey can even get an IP address from the server. We can't, right? Because we need a DHCP relay because they are in two separate networks. So we need to log into Thor and make him a relay agent. Well, we know that the address, the um, 
command is IP helper address, right? I remember I did that in the other video as well. But we need to know where we need to place that command, right? Well, we need to place that command on where the clients are going to be uh, making those requests from, from what IP address, right? So what interface? If we look at Thor, we'll see the clients are on this side of the network. So those requests are most likely going to come through that interface, right? So we need to go to FA10 and put that command. Enable global config mode. We're going to say IP interface FA1 slash zero. That might be my girlfriend right there. So you're going to open up the garage in a second. We open up, uh, we go into the interface mode, and then we're going to say IP helper address. What's the helper address? Sorry, y'all. The helper address is the address where the pools are, where the where the, DN, the DHCP pool is. The DHCP pool is going to be 192.168.34.4. So we're going to say 192.168.34.4. That's the IP is helper address. And let's see if Loki and Frey. Let's let's start with uh, let's start with Loki. This guy up here. See if he can get an IP address. He's probably going to need one on that interface right there. Of course, well now we got lizards running in here. Let's go to uh, go to. Seriously? Oh, that's a leaf. So IP now now we got a jungle in here, y'all. So IP interface brief. It's FA00 interface, right? So let's go to global config mode interface FA0 slash zero. I want to say hi to my fans and my subs. Say hi to Danielle, y'all. Hello. <laughs> anyway, so we go to interface config mode and we are going to say IP address. And instead of putting an IP address, we do what? DHCP. And hopefully he gets an IP address. Let's do a no shut, make sure, and give him us give him some time. Hopefully that should relay the messages. Come on, Thor. Yes. Okay, good. We got an IP address assigned. Let's see what he's got. Go to global config mode or user privileged exec mode. Show IP interface brief. And you'll see that is um, he's got 123.11. Let's go to Frey, which is this guy down here, and make sure he gets an IP address as well. Go to global config mode. Maybe I should leave the, maybe I should leave the garage door open, huh? That way y'all can see me better. Go to global config mode, and we're going to go to the interface right there, which is most likely FA00. It's labeled, right? But let's see anyway. Show IP interface brief. Yes, it's FA00. So we're going to go to interface FA0. Sorry. Zero slash zero. We're going to say IP address DHCP. We're going to do a no shut. Hopefully he gets an IP address. Oh, by the way, y'all, hurricane is coming to the state of Florida and uh, probably wreak havoc. So we're going to have to hunger down. I didn't learn that word until I moved to Florida. Anyways, so it looks like we got an IP address for that interface as well. Let's do a show IP interface brief and see what he got. Show IP interface brief. He got 123.12. Loki got 23.11. Let's go to Odom and check out those bind bindings. Show IP interface brief. And you can see. He got the uh, address 34.4. Oh, that's the, that's, no, we need to do the bindings. What am I thinking? Show IP DACP bindings. There's the bindings right there. We got this guy who got an IP address. That's his uh, MAC address right there. And that's the uh, lease expiration. It expires at that time. We didn't change the leasing. So it looks like by default, I think it's 24 hours by default, if I'm not mistaken. And this guy also got an IP address. Now let's say we wrote these to Flash and we need to see who got some IP addresses. We can look by, look at the mappings of the IP address to the MAC addresses. That is all I got for y'all today. That is my YouTube page. That is my Twitter handle. Go ahead and add me on Twitter. Please leave a comment below on what that issue is with the bindings, why I couldn't write them to Flash. I'm not too sure what it was, but that is how you write it to Flash. For some reason, I got some read-write error. There was enough space. So I'm not too sure what that issue was. Uh, what else? The pop quiz for the day was, oh, what is that DNS server IP address? What is the name, the domain name for that IP address? If you know the answer to that, pull it in the comments below. For now, please comment, like, subscribe to the network.